Mike. Yo, yo, yo. I'm just trying to do the video. Oh, I'm sorry, mate. Oh, sorry. I completely forgot. All right. All right. Catch uh, you later. I'll speak to you soon. All, All right. right. All right. All right. All right. Today's video um, is going to be another helmet review video. We're going to do more and more of these helmet review videos as we go on, and we're going to carry on doing the helmet paintwork videos. If you're more interested in the paintwork videos, then you'll be able to tell by the thumbnail whether it's a paintwork video or a review video. Um, but after our last review video, which was the Icon Air Flight, where we stripped it down and had a look at how it was made and how it worked, D Store Manchester liked what they saw and they approached us and asked if we'd be interested in reviewing some of their helmets that they stock. So they have sent us over the brand new AGV K6 helmet. If you're not familiar with D-Store Manchester, they are the largest Dionese store in the UK. They've stocked the full range of Gore-Tex, leathers, boots, gloves. Um, they are also a D-Air stockist and they can service the D-Air suits so they can, if you've had a crash and your D-Air suit's gone uh, been deployed then they can send it back off to Italy to be re-stitched and, and charged. They are also a Dionese Custom Works store so they can measure you up for a complete custom fit Dionese leather suit um, which can also be fully customized with uh, graphics and colors and leathers, uh, Joe, different color swatches for the different leather panels and sections like that. But they also stock helmets and they stock the AGV helmets and Arai helmets. So they've sent us the new AGV K6 to have a look at. This is AGV's, um, so it's like an all round helmet. If you've got a sports bike, you could wear it. If you've got a touring bike, you could wear it. Sports tourer, adventure bike, you could wear it for pretty much everything. So in the box, we've got the helmet, we've got the instruction manual with a chin curtain and a silicon grease and we've also got a pin lock um, if anyone's unsure who's watching unsure on how to fit a pin lock and you'd be interested in a, a short video tutorial on how to do it then let me know in the comments and i'll try and cover that one for you um, like i said on the icon air flight video it's always worth having a quick look through the instruction manual there's a lot of stuff in there that you won't need to know but if you're not sure on how to remove and refit the visors, there's normally a little instruction there on how to do that. So what we've got here is the K6 helmet, brand new. AGV say that this is the lightest full face helmet on the market. Um, it's a bold statement to make. Uh, but it is an extremely light helmet and, and if you are going to use a helmet like this for touring or any kind of long distance rides you're going to want a very lightweight aerodynamic helmet but you also don't want to uh, sacrifice any safety levels because of that so what AGV have used is a carbon aramid composite shell to create a very strong rigid shell without having to have too much weight to it to keep the weight levels down They've also made it well vented, so you've got all the, you've got a five point vent at the front, and you've got two exhaust vents at the rear, which we'll look at in more detail in a moment. We've got a catch for the visor to keep your visor down. So if we just, we've got some foam under that from when it was in the factory. So you've got completely closed where it's squashing down onto the visor port rubber you can press it once and it comes up one and that is like a slight leaves a slight gap so you've got a slight vented visor there then you press it again and lift and then you've got two notches one two and then fully open um, if you have a look at the two chin vents they're operated by this switch here down at the front you can actually see them open and close They've got a slight gauze on them to stop any kind of stones and flies going through and into the helmet. And then they come up here either side to help take away any condensation off your, the inside of your visor. So stop you steaming up basically. That's also another reason for the pin lock. The pin lock's going to help stop 
uh, the visor misting up and the, re the way it does that is it creates basically like a, a little bit of a double glazed effect um, which helps to prevent the moisture gathering on the inside. So if we have a quick look at the how the visor is attached it's kind of similar to the pieces so you've got a pin that pulls down on either side so the piece that used to be a t-bar shape on the uh, on the helmet itself and the slider was like a forked prong so each side of it slid up underneath the t and held it in place they've reversed that here so what you've got is actually like a single pin that slides up these this is what your silicon grease is mainly for they can get a little bit stiff because it's got to fit well you know it, it wouldn't be any good if there was any play in it so it's always worth putting a little bit of silicon grease on them if, if it starts getting stiff if we have a look behind so you, there's a rubber gasket at the base and then you've got a plastic surround and then you've got the metal component which is behind a slightly larger allen key head or hex head should I say um, that is what your pin is sliding up behind so that's going to hold the visor on there is some slight adjustment so if you loosen the two hex head bolts that plastic section the base plate can move forward and back slightly which creates a better seal on to the rubber if you're not getting a full seal anyway AGV use like a hollow visor rubber so you can see it's actually squashy there um, the reason they do that is because it's a single axis visor so as the visor comes down it just slides straight over the rubber and will clip into the visor retaining clip there the alternate to that is a dual axis visor where the visor comes down to here and then the mechanism draws it backwards onto the rubber now it does that so that there's no friction as the visor comes down if you get a friction it could prevent the visor from seating properly onto the rubber and could quite easily cause like a bit of an air gap um, or it might not completely shut properly and a lot of that is in the adjustment of the mechanisms so but what they've done with AGV is they've created this very very soft squishy rubber to create a good seal but they've also coated the rubber so it's extremely smooth and I know how, that this has got a coating on because you cannot get anything to stick to it it's very tricky to get any kind of masking to stick to it when you're painting them it's the same on the pistas and, and so on but what they've done is by having a single axis visor a hollow rubber um, visor seal and then coating it this comes down slides over the rubber nicely squashes it down and then it's the catch that holds the visor in place if you didn't have that catch that rubber would potentially push the visor back out slightly and cause air gaps but because of the catch it allows it to squash the rubber and create a really really good seal on it it's a four it's a four millimeter thick visor so it's nice and strong um, and obviously these will be available in uh, tinted variants it hasn't got any flip down internal visors so that being the case it's probably a little bit more focused towards a sports market than an out and out touring market because I know a lot of the touring riders like to have an internal fit down visor we've got the three top vents which vent through the inside at the top of the helmet you can see these two ridges which help with the airflow running through and then you've got two exhaust vents at the back here the exhaust vents are below this slight step um, this is to create a vacuum in this area so there's a slight negative pressure which helps draw the air out of the back of the helmet here the front vents two side front side ones slide sideways, sideways like that and the middle one slides up and down um, this is obviously because the if you look at the pistas they have removable rubber sections that you had to push in and out um, this is a lot more usable for a day-to-day -day riding. You're not going to have to stop, take the helmet off, to push the rubber plugs in. Um, the piece was aimed very much towards the race market and the high-end sports market. These are a little bit tricky to operate if you had a glove on, but not too bad. The centre one would be quite easy. These are a little bit trickier. But the, the low profile design is quite good, it means that there will be less uh, air resistance running over the helmet compared with having a large vent. 
So it's a little bit of a payoff between ease of opening and closing versus the aerodynamics of the helmet. The plastic they've used, it's kind of like a, a bit like an ABS. So it's quite a hard, tough plastic. The reason they've done that is because the two vents which slide have probably got some quite small fine components in the, on them that, that connect the two together. So it would need to be a, a very rigid plastic for that to work without them falling off. Um, if this was Joe you know, in an accident, it would probably just break, break away and then allow the helmet then to not catch on anything. These should just ping off. Um, all events and things will be replaceable, Joe. If, if one broke through use, which I'd be surprised if it ever did, um, you'd be able to get replacement vents fitted. Looking at the inside of the helmet, so we've got we've got like a, uh, a base curtain all the way around, but this is also connected to the cheek pads on both sides. You've got a rescue pull, so in the event of an accident, you can pull on these. You can see how that extends there, and the same here, if you pull on that, it extends outwards, so you can get your finger through it, you pull on that, and in the event of an accident, if you've got someone injured, and they lay down, they might have a neck injury, you can pull on them, remove that base section of the helmet, which creates a much larger opening, so that the helmet can be taken off their head without pulling on the neck, which could cause more injury. Um, the if we just unclip it here, you've got three press studs on each side on the cheek pad. And then it's slotted in at the base. So you can pull that like that. That all comes out as one. So you can see here we've got, this is where it slots up between the EPS liner and the shell and clips in. So you've got two clipping points on either side. The slit there is just to allow that to flex as you're getting in and out. You've got three press studs to attach it into the inside of the EPS liner. And then you can see here on your rescue pull, the strap runs right the way up to that front press stud. That's how it, it pulls the liner out by disconnecting it there first. Once that's been removed, you can pull that slack back through to make it tight again. And then you just tuck that up there nice and neat um, this is all washable um, so you've got your washing instructions on the inside there and you can see it's for a medium large helmet the liners for all the helmets you can get different liners so if you're between sizes then rather say for instance if you're between a small and a medium small you could have the medium small packed with a slightly thicker liner so that it could it fits between the two and it might be that it fits on the top but not on the cheeks and you'd have just the cheek a thicker cheek pad fitted to make it fit properly that can all be done at d-star manchester if you go in and and want uh, your helmet custom fitting it's always worth trying a helmet on anyway to make sure it's fit properly uh, because a, a poorly fitted helmet doesn't do what it's intended to do it's not going to save your head in the same way so on the skull cap liner we've got two press studs at the back there and we've got two press studs at the front here. All of these have been improved since the early pista. The early pistas, they weren't quite as well made, but all these press studs are really nice and easy to, to fit. If they ever do become a little bit stiff, you could put a tiny, tiny, tiny coating of the silicon grease on there and it would allow it to clip in and out much easier. You can see on the skull cap liner, all this is, is like a very fine mesh. That's gonna allow the airflow that comes through the top of the helmet to pass through that liner and keep the top of your head cool. And then you can see at the front there, you've got two holes in it there as well to let the air flow in to keep your forehead cool. Uh, the lining on this is, it's an antibacterial lining and it also, it's a, a moisture wicking material. So it will draw the moisture away from the surface to help keep you cool and dry um, and especially if you were doing long tours where you're gonna wear the helmet, say for like six days on the trot in hot weather, it's not gonna to get too too bad. Um, but you know, after six days, when you get back, you can then throw it in the wash and get it back to original. If you were buying, one bit of advice I'd say for anyone who's buying a helmet for daily commuting use, it's always worth buying a spare set of liners. 
Um, they, they recommend a helmet. It's still, I think, recommended for five years from manufacturing date um, before you should replace it. And the reason for that is because some of the glues and um, materials inside the helmet that are there for safety reasons degrade over time. So if you're using it for commuting use, the main thing that ages quickest is the, uh, is the liners. It's always worth, a second set of liners will allow you to get a bit, little bit longer out your helmet unless you just want to change your helmet regularly anyway. Uh, you could, you'd probably say, if you were commuting in a helmet, I wouldn't want to wear a helmet for more than a year really. It's going to get a bit, a bit worn and a bit manky. Um, so we've also got removable straps on the chin strap. It's a double D ring chin strap. You can see there, all of these are removable so they can be taken out and washed. Your skull cap lining can be washed as well. Inside you've got recesses for um, your speakers for a comms unit if you were using something like a cardio pack sort. And you've also got at the front of the chin, you've got a rubberized section there to attach a microphone to and you've also got no air intake coming in through there. So you wouldn't get too much wind distortion or wind noise if you were using a comms unit. All your airflow is coming in through further up to the visor section, not through the bottom. Again, if you were if you were using a comms unit, it's worth attaching the chin curtain because again, it will help stop any airflow or air movement in that section, which could cause kind of wind distortion and wind noise on the microphone. If we look at the inside on the EPS liner, so you can see here now, we've got channels that run through to help the airflow pass through. Once it's inside the helmet, it's gonna pass through them channels between the top of this and the EPS liner. And then you can see the holes at the back for exhaust uh, as an air exhaust. We've also got those channels run right down to the base. So it, although we haven't really got an air, uh, like any kind of an air, air exhaust down at the bottom here, it would allow at least a bit of the heat to rise up and, and get sucked out through that exhaust vent. The EPS liner's got a black coating on it. Um, quite a few of the manufacturers do this now where they put a black coating on top of the EPS liner so that if there's any kind of in, uh, damage to it, it's visible. If the EPS liner is crushed or squashed or distorted in some way, it breaks that black coating. You can see a, a, a white section that shows between where it's kind of fractured or compressed. And that gives you an idea that something's not right, whether it's been crashed in or something's happened that's caused the inside to be damaged. Sometimes people hang them on wing mirrors and things and that can, can damage the EPS liner. And again, just talking about um, looking after the inside of your helmet and bacteria, it's you shouldn't really put your, your gloves and your keys and stuff inside your helmet when you get somewhere. Um, I know it's easy and it's convenient, but you, there's a lot of bacteria on the outside of your gloves and you just, adding all that bacteria to your liner, which you're then going to put on, onto your, uh, your head. So if we have a look inside the helmet here, we've got the date of manufacture. So this was made uh, in November 2019. And the weight of this model, because this is a medium large, you've got all the different weights for the different size helmets. So this is uh, uh, 1,320 grams which is a very, very light helmet. And you can you can tell just handling it how light this thing is. Um, so yeah, it's a good good helmet. We've got on the surface of the EPS liner running around here for Joe Cosmetics, we've got a, a fabric mesh. Just so it aesthetically, it's gonna look nice once this is all attached in, you're not gonna see any EPS there. The EPS liner is split into five different sections and each section is different density to improve impact absorption. Um, depending on where it's touching on your head, you're gonna want different uh, densities. The, it's a very, very rigid head, head helmet. There's not really any flex in it until you get right down to the very edge down there and there's a tiny bit of flex, which you kind of would expect anyway. Flex isn't always a bad thing. If you had a helmet that wasn't a strong material, and was very rigid through the shapes that it was molded in, what you can get there is it will, instead of it flexing, it will take an impact to the point where it then all of a sudden fails. So it will crack, collapse, break, 
and then the impact is then passed through that to whatever's behind it which is obviously your head if you've got an element of flex you don't want any flex really here because you don't want any flex going through into your skull but down here this is your cheeks that flex is actually going to act as an absorber slightly and absorb the pressure before it fails and um, a lot of the really really good or what i've found is a lot of the really really good manufacturers the shells are able to withstand a shop without um, any kind of a, a failure of the material. They can flex quite a lot. And, and although it might feel rigid to, to the touch, under a heavy impact, the shell will actually flex and return, which is quite, quite amazing for generally the materials we have these days. So let's uh, build this helmet back up. So skull cap liner. Four press studs. Four press studs and that's in. You got your base liner. These can be a little bit tricky to get in. Just line it up at the back first, push it down and work your way around to the front. Make sure it's tucking below that rubber edge, the, the base rubber. Push that down and then final clip in there. Hold on. Then what you do is just pull your cheek pad to the side, pass your strap through it. Do that on both sides. Three press studs on the cheek pad on each side to hold them in place. And they all line up nicely. That was extremely easy to get in. Sometimes getting the, the rear press studs in on, on some of these cheap pads can be a little bit tricky. Um, that was nice and easy. What we'll do is we'll just fit that chin curtain underneath so you can see how that fits. So all this is, there's three tabs there that slot in between the rubber interior and the shell, like so. Should be able to get that base rubber just to fit over the top of that as well. Give you a nice clean finish. There we go. It's actually chin curtain in place. Do that. And that's pretty much everything. Nice, easy, well designed helmet. Obviously every all the aspects of it have been really well thought out. Visor back on. Nice and simple there. Pull that retaining clip down, push that in. Spring returns it back up and stops that coming away. Done. If you like this video, then hit like subscribe if you want to see some more and um, like I said we've got the paintwork videos we've got the review videos um, and then if you want notifications every time we put a video out there hit the little bell thanks for watching until next time